Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be binding sim controls with mouse and keyboard. We're not going to be using throttle or a joystick or rudder pedals or track IR. It's just a mouse and a keyboard. Although the mouse does have two buttons on the left side. And uh, if you guys have a mouse that has like a numpad on it, that would help too. But um, for now I'm just going to be using the two buttons on the left side of the mouse. Coupled with the basic mouse controls. And uh... Yeah, like, share, and subscribe, and let's get into it. So, I haven't found really a bind for the yaw axis, and that's partly because you could control the yaw with the mouse anyway. So, it's, it's fine. I mean, if you're in a, a close dogfight in like a Mirage or a Draken, um, the rudder could help a lot, but eh, you could kind of use this. But uh, let's look at our binds real quick. Uh, so... Basically, uh, wait, let's go here, like that. So we'll go to, where is it? Control setup wizard. Go and select this one right here, um, advance. And I have it selected already and I edit it a bit. So let's just start from the top and go all the way to the bottom, I guess. SAS, this is kind of crucial, especially if you don't have a joystick. Um, if any of you play KSP, you know what this is. It's just a stabilization uh, mode. And this controls your autopilot, your dampening, and I think your manual controls, which means you could pull more Gs technically, or you could pull turns quicker or harder. But uh, it's, a, it's a lot more unstable. So bind this. I binded it to this key right here, whatever this used to be. I just replaced it because I never use this key. So I just bind it that to that. Um, should be on the top left of the keyboard. Make sure this is all like this. Take off virtual instructor. Kind of pointless. Mouse and joystick have that selected. Throttle axis. This should be different too. Um, I use my mouse wheel. Because I can access it pretty quick. And I just put the sensitivity high. Because you know the mouse wheel is kind of slow. But uh. I'm not sure if there's a way we can actually bump the speed up. I wish we could, but, uh, yeah. I use the mouse because if you're doing formation flying, or flying in general, you always want your hand on the throttle, uh, especially in a dogfight. So, with the mouse control, I just put it as uh, throttle axis. Uh, roll is A and D. Pitch is shift and control. And the reason I did this is because I'm already going to be pitching with my mouse and stuff, and... Usually if you pitch with shift and control, it, it, it just pitches fully. So, uh, here you could go in here. I, uh, that's inverted and all that. So, that's the controls for that. Here's the controls for roll axis. And the mouse wheel. And make sure to select relative control. And then thrust vector. We'll get to this uh, when we're in the Harrier. But, uh, I think this is it, actually. Let's just test this real quick. Actually, I think this is it. Hold on. Yeah, that is. Okay, so this is the sensitivity for your throttle. I was actually looking for this for a bit. Um, I'm going to put mines at 77. Because I like 7, so... And it's really quick. Um, for formations, you probably want to make this lower. Because you're going to be adjusting the pitch sensitivity, yaw sensitivity, uh, thrust vector. We'll get into that later. Uh, so, Ignite Boosters, I just set that to 5, because it's usually 5, I believe. Uh, Flaps is F. These are kind of pointless, I rarely use those, because my throttle has you know, a, a bunch of buttons on it, so I can select down, up, or whatever. So, I, if you want to bind these, you could, all you really need is flaps, because if your gears are down, it'll use landing flaps. If you're flying normally, it'll use combat flaps. And I think if you're taking off, it should use takeoff flaps, and that's all automatic. Uh, toggle gear, which is, you know, pulling the gears down and up. That's G, left brake, right brake. Make those the same, or make sure they're the same, because that will stop you from running off the runway and freaking dying. But uh, drag shoot, OR. Uh, and then these, so small calibers, make them the same, large, additional guns. Make that all the same. I'm not sure how that's going to translate through bombers, but uh, you just make all those the same. This, the same. Which is basically left mouse click, and then space. 
Now the space bar is basically for all your special weapons, like missiles, rockets, bombs, um, and you could you could even do a combination. If you want to salvo, you can like do old space bar. I typically like just salvo on general. I rarely use just fire rocket, but uh, if I guess if you're doing like bull pups or something, you could do that. But basically, fire secondary weapons. That's space bar. Fire primaries. Left mouse button. Bomb base B. Drop bomb is space bar. Bomb series. Alt space. Fire rocket. Space salvo. Uh, alt space and then fire to ground missile space. Fire to air to air missile space. Weapon lock is alt. Just click it, click it off. Now you could also you could also use spacebar to turn your missile on or uh, cook it up or heat it up or whatever um, you might say you could, but it is better to just turn it on this way because you could friendly fire this way. Um, but yeah, just make sure you get that bind it. You could uh, put it to anything you want. I like alt because it's right near the spacebar. Um, exit weapon mode. Eh, I don't really need this since um, it's kind of switch primary weapons and switch secondary weapons is kind of our master arm. So um, you can see how I bind it all these space bar were very similar is because we're going to be selecting weapons for certain scenarios. So if I'm in a dogfight, I'll probably have my M9Js selected. If I'm bombing, I'll probably have my bomb selected. And when you have them selected, the controls don't interfere with each other. So it's not like you can fire an M9J while firing um, rockets dropping bombs. So... This is kind of our master arm. With these controls, you you must always, before takeoff, um, just click this and select, I don't know, like air to air or whatever uh, you want on takeoff. But um, make sure to select this so it doesn't confuse your weapons when you're in combat because that could be annoying. Switch secondary weapons is down, which this is basically cannons, I believe. If you have two cannons, uh, you can select them. But I just made that down. And these are the arrow keys. This is arrow key up, arrow key down. Flares is X because it's right near my control panel. And you can see all these controls. Uh, most of my controls are on the left side of my keyboard because I have my mouse. And if you're left-handed, this kind of won't work. But I guess you could use the num keys in that area. But um, yeah, so flares. Uh, what is it? Yeah, flares is X. These, I don't really use these because... Eh. They don't. I, I like personally firing off my flares. Like I can see if we had man pads in the game or like AI stinger trucks or something, something with an IR air to surface missile. This would make sense, but in in the air, it just I just feel like I'm wasting flares. I like to pump them out on my own, so I don't really I don't buy these. But I do buy this, and you know, basically, if you turn off your throttle, if you go idle and flare every like second or like flare uh, periodically slowly it shouldn't lead the missile straight to you the missile should go off your six um at a certain range so yeah i just buy an x because i i know i decently know how to use flares correctly so um this is for bullpups and anyone barely uses bullpups that in sim at least so I went ahead and didn't bind this, I just left it the same, but if you did want to bind it, I suggest using the numpad. So, like 8, 5, and 4, and 6, just for, you know, 8 and 5 will be pitch, and then 4 and 6 will be yaw, so, yeah, or yaw's up here, but yeah, you get the point. And then, radars are, change radar search, radar search mode is 3, uh, radar scope scale 2, Select radar target for lock radar target on. And this is basically, you know, locking the target. If you see it on radar, it locks it. This is um, switching between targets. So kind of slewing, but there's really no reticle to slew and lock your target. So this is the closest you'll get to slewing your uh, radar. And um, what is it? This is the range, I believe. So that just basically opens your view range, and this is your range going down, and then um, reload guns is R, because if you land, and I guess you can just spam R and it works. Uh, left shift Q, that's for the ballistic, 
ballistic computer, and that's what I have literally all throughout my controls, even realistic battles. So I usually do left shift Q. You can bind that to something special. Um, and this only, I guess, if you're bombing an airfield or bases or stuff, this helps kind of. You're better to use the the in onboard computer in the aircraft, but um, or uh. I'll show you in a bit. There's, there's a different way to using the ballistic computer in sim. Uh, then toggle views. These you really don't need. I just these are basic binds. I guess they they binded them, but uh, I don't have time to remove them. Although you do need V if you're on uh, if you land it and you want to look at your aircraft, then you know V. Look back is S. Zoom in the air is and no, I'm sorry, numpad three and Dell. So. It's basically to the right, and that's just for positioning, because I already binded it. You can see where the... I'm sorry, I think it's in common. Zoom. So yeah, this basically just right here pushes the camera in like that really quick, and it's the right uh, mouse button. And then enter... I'm sorry, numpad 3 and Dell is for that. So if I'm like taking off, I'll probably keep it like this, or if I'm searching for targets... I mean, this is just a better view in my opinion, but, um, yeah, I just usually put it all the way back. And then if I'm dogfighting or something, or if I need to look close, you just right mouse button and boom. So that's my personal preference and it seems to work. And what else? Let's see. Where are we? Right here. Okay. So this is the side buttons on the mouse. So. Maximum value is the front one, and the decrease value is the back uh, button. And this is on the left side of the mouse, those little two buttons, they usually get them on like Logitech mouses or gaming mouses or whatever, but um, yeah. Uh, forward is increase value, and backwards is decrease value, and then reset axis is the middle click, because you're going to need that, especially if you're in a dogfight. Head movement, upward and downward. Now this is looking over the the nose and looking down, I believe. I don't know why I bind it. Hold on. Get rid of that. So I just use W and then S is look back. And uh, reset should be fine. Head movement, left and right. This is looking to the left side of your aircraft and to the right and then... Aerobatic smoke is L, open cockpit's 9, cockpit lighting is 8, and then this is the sight, turning your sight on and off, and this is for gamepad junk, uh, this is for your mouse if you want to change the sensitivity and all that, the rudder, um, I checked this because the square just looks nicer, um, and then I just keep on simplified, uh, then, what is it, trim, so reset trimming is 5, numpad 5, and then T is basically if you pitch the nose up or if you're like yawing or whatever. If you're moving the aircraft in any way and you click T, it's going to automatically trim your aircraft. Which I actually don't like because uh, use T to communicate really quickly. And then engine, toggle engines, I. And for special engine controls, which I don't really know how to use correctly. So I didn't bind it. I, I don't even bind this on my joystick. Although I do bind the... Uh, separate engine control so if like I want to go into a flat spin I'll turn off my right burner and turn on my left burner stuff like that but um yeah uh well, I guess we'll go through movement real quick so E and Q that's looking to the sides and this is good for carrier landings or if you want to see over and you can even uh combine them too so like W's for looking up and Q's for looking to the side E's for that and you can you know kind of Click them all at the same time a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's binding for that. S is for looking behind really quick, and you can see with this aircraft doesn't really help, but if you're in like a Mirage or something, it's okay. But one thing you could do is manually turn around and then hit your Q button and look behind. You can even hit the W button or stuff like that. If you look up, uh, you can hit backwards and do stuff like that. So it's a neat binding. Also, you could do this, which helps. And so these. My head movement, this is for tracking a target. If you're in like a dogfight and he's gone over your nose or something, you guys are in a one circle or two circle dogfight, you can just look up and keep track of him. And middle mouse click to reset. So if you're up here and he goes in front of your nose real quick, just reset it. So yeah. 
and also hold C to look around with the mouse and this is for basically cruising if you're looking for targets and you're checking your radar and everything you just hold C and have the aircraft stable but uh, yeah let's turn on the engines with I you see they're turning on we will turn our throttle down laps take off and let's turn on dampening and this is the SAS mode, so dampening just stables the aircraft. It makes it a lot more smoother, especially for cruising and looking for targets. But I usually turn it off if I'm in a dogfight. But it's very dangerous because you could go into flat spins and roll the aircraft out and die and all this stuff. The aircraft wants to kill you once you turn off dampening. So it's very dangerous, but I usually do it if I'm in a dogfight just to get that extra pull um, and extra agility and speed. Uh, it makes the aircraft more nimble and killable but it's cool um what else yeah so what is it uh the side mouse buttons if you bind them to this it's gonna help you a lot especially if you're moving your mouse in a dog fight and you don't have to move your hands much you just move like the mouse the left side mouse buttons you click them and boom you can look up and track your target and then middle mouse click resets it um We'll go over radar controls real quick. So there's a dot on my radar right there. And I click one and it tracks it. So we'll untrack him. You click one again, untracks. Two is the radar range. Uh, 46 is usually pretty good. And then three, I think, is the scale or like the, the what is it? The view range or what it, like that right there. So you could uh, change that with three and then four is selecting so if I had like five targets on radar I'd click four to select the one I want to select um, preferably not friendlies and then uh, you'd be good so I think we're good on our engines and everything so let's take off let's use up air key to select our actually is it down no it's down okay my bad I bonded it to down so We'll select our sparrows for now and let's take off i'm gonna hold b so we could get a nose pitch down hold our brakes and then release and uh yeah the i mean these these controls for mouse and keyboard they're pretty good because i used to fly with mouse and keyboard for like a year or two and it wasn't the worst. I mean, I got kills. I was used to it. I mean, I, I had never used a joystick or throttle, so I was I was happy, but um, it is definitely worth it to get a throttle and joystick if you're going to play sim religiously. But uh, if you're not, uh, keyboard and mouse is actually fine because, in my opinion, it's easier to get kills in sim than realistic battles. No one sees you. You could sneak up on people, freaking blast them out of the sky. There's hundreds of bombers and stuff, which is kind of boring but um even taking out migs and stuff is fairly easy so we locked him up with uh one and we're gonna slow down here we'll use alt to turn on our missile seeker and let's level out because you can't really fire the sparrows while uh turn like that hold on a little too close we're going to wait till he turns left more and slow down. Alright. I think this is perfect. Come on. There we go. And boom, it's tracking. Come on. There he goes. Also, um... A lot of sim pilots don't know this, and it ends up killing friendlies a lot. Um, on a, there's two types of radar uh, signatures that I'm aware of. One is friendly and one is foe. And foe is like just a, a dud, like just one dud. And friendlies have two duds. So the best way of explaining it is one, in a, one is a minus sign and one is an equal sign. So, uh, equal is friendly, minus is enemy. That's a, actually a really good way to explain it. But, uh, yeah, that's a good overview for sim radar. And with older aircraft, there's there's just duds, um, so you can't really tell, but you do see the aircraft there. But uh, if your aircraft has IFF, 
um, which you should you could research on that, see what aircraft have IFF and what don't. The F4 has IFF, the MiG-21 does, uh, T2, basically most top tier uh, radars have it, but um, yeah, it could uh, determine whether a friendly aircraft is friendly or foe, so you know, it reduces the team kills, because a lot of pilots still don't know this because I've been team killed by radar missiles, AIM-9Js, and I'm like, did you not check your radar? Or can, can you not see the silhouette of two gigantic burners? But, um, yeah, that's just a helpful tip that a lot of sim players should know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, these controls work for props, too. Obviously, props are a lot more dangerous and want to kill you, but, you know, uh... They do feel nice and smooth, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll go through our controls real quick. H is for the air brake, G is for gears, flaps is F, roll is D and A, and W is for looking over the nose, S is for looking behind, C is for looking around, um, left mouse buttons are for looking up and down, and the middle mouse click is reset. Uh, scroll wheel is throttle, and uh, selecting ordinances is down arrow key, and then up arrow key for like your gun, your Vulcan. If you had 50 Vulcans, you can select each an in individual one, but um, we don't. Um, what is it? Uh, oh yeah, bombs. So, we'll select our bombs, and I still have the same button I fired with my aim sevens I will use with bombs and that's because I selected bombs and um, let's see we'll go in our we'll click Y here cockpit mode and we'll switch it to bombs and now the reticle should be switched on to bombs I for bombing for the bombing reticle to work so I'll show you right here there's our targets there they are so There you go. And I think he's dead. Yeah. There it goes. And the blinking, it, it's like a, 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 the computer is still computing. So if it's it doesn't go solid completely, then um, you could still drop your bombs and try your luck. Because it did hit there. But um, what is it? It's uh, less accurate, but uh, once it goes solid, you, you you know the bombs. That's where they're gonna hit. If it's still blinking, it's a hit or miss. But you know, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, if you're hitting an airfield and it's still blinking, you know you're gonna hit the airfield. But uh, yeah. Now landings. We'll try and land back on the airfield correctly and without dying. So we popped our air brakes. Coming in a little hot, but this is a. Decent runway. We're just gonna try to bleed as much speed as possible around 450. You could drop your gears and flaps. And now we'll start playing with the throttle. Just to keep us on the correct flight path and without stalling. And this is with okay, so dampening was on. Gosh dang this thing. It's a little hard to control with the mouse, but you know, landings are possible. Not impossible. And boom. A little bit of a botched landing, but, you know, uh, hold B for the brakes. And then once you get about, like, 250, you can pop your chute, hold the brakes, and boom. It's a little tough, but, you know, it works. As long as you're on the ground and nothing seems to be broken, you should be good. Oh, yeah, and X, you know, players. I'm going to try a carrier landing. Turn on dampening. Slow this bird down. Use down, flaps down. Right, stay high. Oh, dang it, our bombs are back. Drop those. Nice, get lower. Coming in a little hot. There we go. See? You could land on a carrier with these controls. Even if you're not a carrier. 
capable aircraft. We might slide off the edge. Hold on. Yeah, that'll keep us. There we go. Maybe? Come on. And boom. Look at that. We repaired. So you could land on carriers with this. Um, maybe coming a little softer than I did, but uh, it's not even a carrier capable aircraft. But it does get a tail hook for emergencies, so it works. Last but not least, we'll be testing the VTOL capabilities, so we'll keep it at zero. Takeoff flaps. This is it dampening? And here's our thrust vector controls. Where are they? Here they are. So I use num plus and num enter because they're right above each other. Plus is for up, decreases enter. So let's put that to 100%. Right. Turn our engines on. All right, I think we're good. We'll throttle up now. Gears up. Flaps up. And we'll slowly start to go forward. And then around 300, you could just full. And there we go. We're in the air. Uh, now we need to go land. I'm gonna hold shift here so I can still look around. Alright. And by the way, I'm using no yaw, just the yaw with the mouse. And it uh, still works for really good. We'll uh, get our flaps down, ears down. And now we're on final approach. And here we are. Come on. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, how you use VTOLs with uh, mouse and keyboard. It's uh, pretty simple. It works. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a joystick or throttle, this this mouse and joystick, uh, what is it, mouse and keyboard actually works and uh, is effective. You can probably get a good amount of kills with it, especially because it's Sim. Sim is, it's, it's easy to get kills on Sim, so. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Here's a quick overview of all the controls. Um, and the common controls are basically the same, except I did change zoom. So, yeah, there you go. And make sure to select advance keyboard and mouse only and then go to full real controls and then you could start uh, binding and then you just save it and uh yeah i mean mouse and keyboard does work in sim um but yeah thanks for watching guys like share and subscribe join the discord down below and take care guys